Hey, and then. All right, hey, let's uh, let's go. So, hey, hey, we're waiting for. There's one more volunteer who is supposed to be here. Some dude. Oh, there he is, man. Martin. Hey, all right, listen. Um, let's go grab a seat. Okay. I think we have a uh, we we have a, good, a cool class today, so um, well it's going to be cool for me. So I don't know what you all are going to think about it, but hang on, let's get hang on. We're going to get started. Seriously, grab a seat and laptops away. Um, hey, here's how we're going to do this at this point. We're we're going to hook our cameras up before you all get here, okay? So when you start class, in order to get the best, to be able to take the Canvas quiz, it's really best if you're hooked up to the Wi-Fi at the start of class. And then once you do that, once you take the quiz, then get off Wi-Fi until the end of class, okay? Because we're gonna have to hook our cameras up mid-class because the batteries run out. All right, cool? So that's one of the problems with you all being able to take these Canvas quizzes is you're not on Wi-Fi and you can't make things happen. All right, let me, um, we're calling today, uh, I'm calling today's class a singular lens. These are our volunteers. We're going to introduce them in a second. Hey. And can you, Leah, can you go to the next slide? Hey, watch this video. Watch this gi this little gif or whatever you want to call it. So a singular lens, right? The way we think about perspectives. The way we think about reality. And so think about whether you would do that. Like just what would could could you could you pull that off? Right? Some of you probably have a hard time really even looking at it. And Leah, go to the next slide. So here's, this is a different Buddha hand, but this is essentially it. It's kind of what it looks like. So you think about what you just saw in that first gift, the little mini video, and what you're looking at right now. They're two very different things. And kind of like when I see this, I think, oh, okay, man, I could do, I could pull that off. But when I look at the first one and I only see that, I think ah, I'm not really certain that, that I could do this. And for me, what I am thinking about constantly as an instructor is trying to give you different perspectives on which to see the issues that we're talking about. And in any one class, we only have 75 minutes. So I'm limited, we're limited in the number of perspectives that we can take because it's 75 minutes. And any topic we talk about in this class, really, it could be, we, we could talk for an entire semester to cover the many, many different perspectives. And I think about how limited it is 
and how limited my understanding of things are. I mean, sometimes, you know, we're talking about issues, like, like the issue that we're going to talk about today. Peop, there are thousands of books that have been written on this issue, and thousands and thousands of articles, and scholars spend their entire lives thinking about this issue, and we're going to talk about it now in about 70 minutes. And it's highly politicized, and there are so many different ways to approach it that there's no way to be thoughtful, even-handed, and fair. The only thing that we can do is, that I can do, is try to be a little more thoughtful and a little more even-handed and a little more fair to give you some different ways to see some things. So listen, um, can you all just go out, come through this door here? I'm gonna, we're gonna introduce you in a minute. Just, just go through there. There's a, there are a couple, there's a couple chairs you can sit on, but just, you're only gonna be out there for a hot minute. Okay, so listen. Here's, here's what we're gonna, go, go to the next slide. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring them out two at a time for the whole class, and we're just gonna keep switching. So two, two of them will come out, and I'm gonna talk about something, I'm gonna send them, have them go back out in the hallway, and then the two other people are gonna come, and I'm gonna talk about the same issue. So I've broken the class up into five parts. So we're talking about immigration today, and I've broken immigration up into five different subtopics, so to speak, okay? And I'm gonna say something about each subtopic, and with the first group, each time they come out, I'm gonna take the position that, we really need to get immigration under control. It, it, you know, I'm gonna talk about the United States, but it, we could be talking about Europe, countries in the Middle East, countries in Asia, we could be talking about lots of different places. But unfettered or, or uncontrolled immigration can undermine the social order. I'm gonna take that basic position. So each time they come out, I'm gonna hit that position, okay? And then I'm gonna send them back have them go back out in the hallway. Then the second group's going to come out, and I'm only going to take the second position. So in each one of the subtopics that we approach, I'm going to take the position that, hey, immigration is a net positive, and immigrants are really good for the social order, wherever they, they are. Okay? Got it? So, so check this out. So I'm, I'm, I'm mirroring what often happens in our lives, which is we take a singular approach to particular issues. Like we decide, hey, I'm against immigration, so I only read things that are against immigration, or only watch things that are against immigration. I, I, I focus on things that confirm what I already think. Or I take the side that, hey, we should support the rights of immigrants, and we should be thinking about immigration in new ways. And so I only focus on the things that confirm what I already think. So I'm going to mirror that in the class. So each set of two students is only going to get one singular perspective. And then we'll just have a conversation at the end and see what they got out of it. Okay? So you can imagine then me, as you're sitting through this class, by the way, dude, this is a fucking cool class. All right. Like, come on, man. Think about this. You're going to watch two different professors. You're going to watch me being totally questioning and, and uh, uh, in, a, in a way like rejecting immigration. You're gonna be, I'm going to be that per professor. That's my ideology, right? But then I'm going to go over here with the other group, and I'm going to be like, nah, man, immigration, it's all good. And like all these anti-immigration people, they need to wake up because you're going to see that. So what you, what you want to think about is imagine if I'm one or the other. As a professor, I just come in and I give you one perspective and I don't give you the other. And you're going you're gonna to hear how limited your understanding is going to be. Okay? All right, bring them up. Okay, so. Am I, am I right, dude? Cool? Cool class? Like, oh, fuck. All right, man, go to the next one. Uh, okay, so here's the deal. Hey, have them bring their phones out. Yeah, we're doing attendance right now. Yeah. So first thing, though, before we go, yo, man, yo, listen. We're, some of you already are getting, having points taken away. I mean, there's a lot, do not send the code to anybody. Because they're not going to get the, in fact, not only are they not going to get the points, they run the risk of getting into a heap load of trouble. Do not send the code to anybody who's not in this class. All right? 
and the master's sh- attendance sheet is going around. So when we, so anyway, all right, go go ahead. So now you, you want you just want to be on Wi-Fi in the beginning of class. You guys have your phones. Do you have your phone, bro? And by the way, if you can't get on Wi-Fi, yo, what you need to do is take a selfie that you're in. I don't know what, what some of you are la- not understanding about taking selfies. Why do you have to learn about taking selfies from an old white man? You know what I mean? Turn around, hold your phone up, make sure you're in it, and get the front screen and send it to Julie. Don't, that's the only way you're going to get credit if you, don't, if you can't get into Canvas. Okay? Cool? Yo, has everybody got it? Anyone have a problem? Are we good? You know what you got to do, right? If you're not here, you don't take that selfie. You will not get, if you don't, if you can't get in Canvas, you will not get credit. That's like really how it's working. All right, man. Um, Can you go to the next slide? Uh, All right, Doe, we're ready. Go ahead. Hey, um, no, go back. Don't sign anyone's name on the attendance sheet other than your own, okay? And sign the same way each time. You do not, if you sign someone else's name, that's cheating, and you can go to the Office of Judicial Affairs, and they'll handle it. Like, don't do that. All right, man. Um, Okay. Hey, so two, why why don't the two of you go out, and you can go out in the hallway. And just hang out out there and we'll bring you back and when we bring you back you can just move over and okay um so can you introduce yourselves um hi my name's anaya um where are you from i'm from maryland Maryland, yes. like PG County, or no, that's not PG County. We're we're, well, we're PG in Maryland. County's in there. Yes, yeah, sir. We're in Maryland. Um, it's a small town called Millersville. Yeah. Well, what's your background? I'm Puerto Rican. Your ancestry, Puerto, Puerto Rican? Rican and Native American. And Native American. And we talked. I actually talked with her about this. By the way, if you're black, and you have Native American in your family, like you say, like, oh yeah, I'm part Native American. And the Native American that you have, the, the ancestry you have is Cherokee. It's like 90% chance that you don't have Native American blood. All right? That's just the story in your family. You don't have Cherokee blood, man. That's just the story. Like black people just took that on and it became part of the story. You might have white blood. Anaya, wait, keep that close. Anaya has, you have indigenous blood because you have blood, if you're Puerto Rican, probably from Taino people or something. All right, bro. I'm Martin. I'm a cybersecurity major. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. From Brooklyn? Yeah. All right, so listen, we're going to talk about issues related to immigration. And I'm going to just make some arguments for the two of you. And mostly you're going to listen, say some things, ask some questions as I'm going through. Um, But uh, we're going to, yeah, I want to talk about some of the ins and outs of immigration. Okay, cool. Um, right now, I'm going to talk about legality. All right, mom. So first off, um, one of the things that's pretty obvious to me is that Ill- illegal immigration, illegal immigration is illegal. Like, it's a crime, right? It's a crime to enter the United States. It's a crime to enter any other country, any country anywhere. I don't know a single country that you can enter without permission and without papers and go into that country somehow and stay even for a short period of time without being documented in some way, but it's criminal, right? There are crimes on the book that you can't do that. And if you do commit that crime, then you should be arrested. Like, it's pretty basic, right? And you should, would be sent back to wherever you came from because this is the idea. You're breaking the law. 
for und- on, on the question. That right now, we're just talking about undocumented immigration or if you commit immigration fraud or something, right? But for some reason, people like this who are part of this movement to say we need to do something about immigration, like somehow they get like thrown to the dogs or something. Like somehow they're bad people. Like it's easy to look at these folks and say like, oh, these are like racist white people who just hate immigrants. It's like, well, hang on a second, man. Like maybe they're just talking about legality. If people were like shoplifting or stealing bikes on the street or something and they're saying like, hey, you can't steal that bike. It's a crime. You can't enter a country illegally. It's a crime. Right? And it's a bad idea because you don't want people in your country who are undocumented. Like nobody wants that. You need to know who's where and what's going on. That's just kind of the nature of things in any society, just like in this classroom or at Penn State. So um, next slide. So here is, uh, this is an example of a, a protest that happened in Miami a number of years ago. Uh, of people supportive of the rights of undocumented immigrants or illegal immigrants, right? We could call them illegal or undocumented, but I'll say undocumented, right? But illegal. Um, And most, if many, if not most of the people in this photo are undocumented without papers. So the question is like, well, why don't we just go in and arrest them? Like, this is a problem for society. It's a problem for all of us to have a society in which we are not addressing this issue. Like, it really leads to, leads things to fall apart, okay? Um, Next slide. And what we know is that we actually can control. So people will say, hey, you can't control undocumented immigration, right? Or illegal immigration. If people want to come, they're going to come. If people are hungry enough or needy enough or wanting enough or just desiring enough, they're going to come. They're going to get here somehow, okay? But what we see here, for example, is this is the number of immigrants, Mexican immigrants apprehended at the U.S. border. These are just Mexican immigrants, right? So look, at we go back to 92 and we see this number, look at, this is the number of Border Patrol agents, right? And look at how the number start to go down as soon as Border Patrol agents go up, which means that if we actually try to control this flow of illegal immigrants, we can do it. And we probably should do it. I don't see no other reason why we shouldn't do that. Okay? You can. So people say, like, oh, you can't control it. No, 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 we can. Look, here it is. Here are the data. All right, so questions. Do you have a question? Do you have a thought? What are your thoughts about what I just said? I'd say like concerning the legality. What's that? that? Yeah, just concerning everything I just said. Anything that I said that you like want to yeah. comment on? I think a lot of people that are against um, undocumented immigrants and like having them stay in the country, I'd say in my experience of like seeing those people that it's not primarily the legality that's being concerned. It's like the effects from those people staying in the country, whether that's like economically or culturally meaning that people who are really critical of the immigration flow they're critical for other reasons beyond the legality okay all right that's cool any any thought on the legality question any do you have anything else any other comment and like people that are like only concerned with the legality i think like there needs to be some empathy involved because these people are like these undocumented immigrants realize that there is a system that they can use, but the process is so long and strenuous. Yeah, I got you. But listen, man, if you have, for example, if you've got your, if someone takes your bike because they need a bike, because they need a bike to get to work out at Walmart on North Atherton, it's like, do you have, em- it's like, hey, I have empathy, man. They need a bike. They got to get out there. Like, there's, at what point does the empathy start to say, hang on a second, man? Well, I'd say like, I don't know if that's analogous because these people are like fleeing conditions All right. where they're like in danger, like seeking asylum. And it's like- You think everybody is I'd in say danger? Maybe not, obviously not everybody, but I'd say the vast majority of- where, How do you know that? How, wait, how do you know? So I just want to ask you a question. How do you, where'd you come up with that idea? How do you know that to be true? Well, I don't know for sure, but okay. from what I've seen, like stories of okay, people all right. fleeing, I got like, you. trying to cross the border to escape violence from their home country. Okay. All right, Anaya, what do you, what about you? Um, to go off what he was saying about the legality and how <laughs> they, 
don't have empathy. I won't say don't have empathy, but there should be some empathy aspect in it. And some people are blindsided and everyone's in danger and everyone's fleeing because they're in danger. And it is hard to tell if everyone is in danger, but I feel everyone has a reason. Yeah, but right. And so do all the people who haven't come. I mean, when do you stop, right? At what point do you say like, okay, we got to put the walls up now. Do you close the door? Right, like everybody in this class has a reason to show up with five minutes left and get full attendance points. And we cut it, we're just like, no, you can't do that. We're not giving you credit, you weren't here. But I came in 10 seconds after you closed the attendance thing. Ah, whatever, man, that person was 12 seconds, that person was 15 seconds, when do we stop it? So that would be my question, when do you stop? Just say, okay, but enough. Because there's always more people, man. There are always thousands and millions more so when do you stop? Honestly, I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> it's, a yeah, it's a tough question, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. You can leave the mics. Or actually, bring the mics with you. Dude, your job is to open the door and tell them to come on out. Here, you guys are going to go back out in the hallway. Thanks, man. Nice job. You're going you're to come out in a second. Just give them the microphones. Dude, how'd I do? Cool? All right, watch this. Yeah. Yo, what up? Okay, Addy and Zach. At, uh, where, where, where are you from? Is Addy your full name? Just push it up, yeah. My full name is Adelina. Adelina, and what's your ancestry? Um, so I'm mixed, half white, half Hispanic. My dad is from Bolivia. Yeah, Hispanic. I also have some Native American in me, so. Uh-huh. Everybody's got Native American in them. You know what I mean? Dude, should I ask her? Is it Cherokee? Should I ask her? No, she's not black, so it doesn't matter. Is it Cherokee? Incan. Yeah? All right. Bro. Uh, yeah, I'm Zach. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Philly. I'm 100% white. Dude, go Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, so listen, man. How about that game? All right. I want to talk about it. All right, man. All right, so listen, man. Here's the deal. You guys ready? We're going to talk about illegal or undocumented immigration for a moment. All right. Um, you know, we have this undocumented immigration flow that's coming into the United States, and it's really difficult to cut it off. It's difficult to slow it down. It's not coming from Africa or Asia because in order to get here from Asia, in order to get here from Africa, like you've got to get on an airplane. And so you, it's really easy to stop people at the borders and like check their papers and see what's going on. But coming across the border from the South is very, very difficult. And, and it's hard and we just have these immigration flows and we don't stop it for some reason, right? And do you ever wonder like, why don't we stop? Why don't we arrest undocumented people and send them back? Do you ever wonder that? Was your dad undocumented by the way? Um, yeah, so my dad did cross the border illegally. Um, he came obviously from Bolivia with a couple of siblings and then he went to New Mexico for a little bit. Uh huh. And, the, and he came because he wanted, why did he come? Um, just to like work, to provide for his family back home. And good thing he did because here you are. Well, do you ever wonder like why we don't just round people up and send them back home? It's really easy, right? I mean, you, it's, easy. it's not difficult to find undocumented workers, man. Do you ever wonder that, bro? No. Yeah? Not at all. Yeah? Do you see undocumented workers? I work with undocumented workers. Yeah? Have you ever wondered, so you never wonder like why, but dude, do, do here, please, we know who they are. Like, it's really easy to find them. Just like, like, dude, you, you're here illegally, send you back home, right? I mean, yeah, it's easy to say that. Yeah, but it's not. I don't think it's easy to actually do that. Because? Because, I mean, once people have a footing in this country, I, how hard it, like, the moral of a person shouldn't just want to send them back to their home, like where they came from. Yeah, but, okay, all right. Yeah, that is a question, right? But there's another, there's another issue, right? For example, so federal law states that state and local enforcement authorities may only hold people on immigration detainers for 48 hours. Like, this is the vast majority of fit law enforcement personnel can only hold undocumented immigrants for a very short period of time. So it makes me wonder, are we really interested in stopping the flow of undocumented immigration? 
Like, are we really interested? Because you would think the very people who are most likely to run into people who are undocumented or illegal would be the very people who we would deputize to say like, hey, you got to put them, they're here without papers, you got to put them in jail, put them somewhere so the immigration authorities can come and do what they have to do and check their paperwork and send them back home or whatever they have to do. But we don't do that. And you, and you wonder, wh why is that? Go to the next slide. And so my question is, who has more power? Why don't we do that? And it seems to me that I look on one hand, I look at like, you have citizens over here, including people who are screw, you know, saying like, we should send people back home. You got citizens over here. And then you have like business and the owners of the means of production and what they want is cheap labor. They want a, la a labor force, a workforce, right? They want to make sure that whenever they, have, they need workers for a job, they can always find workers for a job. So we can just like turn off the flow of immigration. We can, we can open the flow of immigration. We can ensure like, hey, we need more farm workers. We can make sure that we can move people. Um, just open it up a little bit. So let me grid. Just let more people cross. And then right now, and then suddenly we get to a period where, ah, oh, we have too many workers. So it's like, no, 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 migra. Right, the, on the border, migration, uh, like on the border, right? Border patrol, like close it down a little bit, like whatever, but we don't, but it just keeps going. And it makes me think that the owners of this world, of this country, must, for some reason, the people that are running the shop, must, for some reason, want to have this unfettered immigration flow, including undocumented workers. Because otherwise, we would just pass a law that says you can't do that. Like, or we would tell these, like, uh, the, the authorities, the people who would be deputized, the people who are going to rent it to folks, like, pick them up off the streets and do something. Have you ever thought about that? It's just bizarre to me that we just let it happen. And by we, I mean the people that are making the laws and enforcing the laws, because it's not the three of us. It's somebody else. It's people that are like holding the strings up here, and they don't. So we got this constant immigration flow, and we got about 11 million undocumented workers in the United States right now, undocumented people. Okay, a thought on that? What do you got? Um, I think just in response, like personally, I think like the immigrants and so you're talking about undocumented workers i think they're like driving our our economy essentially like without them we wouldn't like these big businesses like you're saying and they want them to come in and get the cheap labor regardless of whether it's cheap or not i feel like especially after covid americans just really don't want to work and if and the people complaining about these the the illegal immigrants coming here seem to just be the people who don't want to work themselves so i don't really see how like we don't agree with the businesses wanting to pull them in here and give them a better opportunity when the Americans don't want to take it when it's right in front of them. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Maybe like when you say Americans don't want to work, I'm not sure you might be pushing it a little hard, but not, not don't want to work, but like, I don't know, I guess our, our little pushback from harder labor jobs now that they can see that things are online and they have better access to technology and internet and everything and well well it's like if you if you get shipwrecked and you land on an island in the middle of the ocean you're going to figure out how to get food you're going to work really hard to figure out how to get food or you're going to die and so like but a lot of folks if they like if you don't need to do that you're not going to do it do you have any thought um i feel like at the end of the day as long as you're paying your taxes like then you're fine to live here because I feel like at the end of the day like everyone just wants to make money here uh -huh. so even if you're undocumented or not like if you're working and you're paying and helping the government that way then I think people just look past it like it's whatever okay all right okay good can you guys go back out and pass the microphones off to your compatriots there yo how do I do we do good so you see CC like the first round you see, like I could, we could just take that approach, and you could make, and I could have just gone off on that argument. On it, I could spend the whole class on that perspective, or we do, or we do this one over here. Um, can you go to the next slide? All right, let's look at this. You ready? Um, all right, go ahead. We're going to talk about jobs and wages. Okay, go ahead, Leah. 
So, uh, so they, when, you know, people say, for example, that, hey, the thing about undo- we're going to stick with undocumented workers here, and we're going to continue along these lines. That the thing about undocumented workers is they're really not taking jobs away from Americans who want the jobs. They're taking jobs that other, that other Americans don't want. And because if they didn't, the Amer- there wouldn't be jobs because the Americans would be in the jobs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're mostly, they're mostly in like just very specific occupations. Um, but in fact, um, what we found in looking, the one study looked at 465 civilian occupations and four have majority immigrant workers. And in fact, what we're finding is that immigrant workers and including undocumented immigrant workers are spread across the labor force. And so they're not just taking jobs, like specific jobs from specific areas of the economy that Americans don't want, but in fact, they're taking jobs from workers across the spectrum of the entire workforce, which means like the two of you, when you are out in the workforce, getting ready for your job, right? Applying for jobs and so on. You're gonna be competing with people who are in the country illegally without paperwork, adequate residency paperwork and work permits and so on. And if people decide to hire them, they can underbid you. And they can like, okay, so you're gonna be competing not only with all these folks who are just have the same legal status as the two of you, but you're gonna be competing with other people who don't have the legal status. And so it makes me really wonder, like, is that a good idea for us as a society to have that? Is it a good idea for you as workers or for me or for anybody? Or go to the next slide. Um, And what we see happens is there's a wage depression so that when somebody does not have papers or does not have the legal status as somebody else, the employer has power over them. And the employer can hold that over their heads to say like, hey, listen, man, you're going to work. I'm going to offer you this much money and you're going to take it or you're not going to take the job because I'm going to find somebody else. Because if Martin, if if you don't take the job, is it Martin or Martin? Martin Martin doesn't. If you don't take the job, Anaya will take it because Anaya is going to, Anaya is here. She's here illegally, and Anaya's here. She has a family, and she's got to make money and bring it in the household, and she has no other way to bring money in the household, and she's not going back home. So she's going to take that job, and I can hold it over her head, and she'll take it, and she'll do whatever she has to do, right? And that means the wage, the depression goes down because you're going to underbid somebody else. And then that means the, the, the owners, right, the, the bosses are always going to be able to find immigrant workers or undocumented immigrant workers to work for less. And that means I don't have to pay fair wages to anybody else because I can just find someone to do the job for less. So it undercuts unions, it undercuts workers' power, it undercuts all these things. So it's like, how is that a good idea? Right? How is that fair? And how is it a good idea? Okay, a thought. What do you think about that? I think there should be more reform of like the companies that are hiring those workers and maybe there should be like programs created where those undocumented immigrants can like get those work permits or be in the process of getting them Mm -hmm. something like that to like mitigate that because like the, the whole thing itself I don't feel like could be solved with one solution so there probably needs to be like multiple programs in different areas Mm -hmm. of their life to like help them become a fully integrated citizen. Uh, So we have some of those programs in place, but we're just overwhelmed. We've got like 11 million undocumented workers in the United States right now, 11 to 12 million. So it's like, you can only do that so much. And let's say we put the program together and we legalize or we, we, we vet these 11 to 12 million workers. There's going to be 11 to 12 million more who come. And it's like, when do you stop? Like, so that's a problem, but yeah, okay, that's fair. But w- the question would be, where do you stop? Anaya, how about you? I what? agree with the programs in place, but then also think about how there will be more people coming in and more people coming in. Uh-huh. Well, what do you think about that? 
that's a lot of like wage gaps that is gonna be even more um, even more of a gap than yeah it's, there a, it's, already is. it's a large it's a it's a huge wage depression is what you what yes. they what economists call it right it's a yeah. serious wage depression you know, and the two of you will feel it if you are out in the world competing with people who, who, are, who are more, who are hungrier than you, and they're not protected by the law, so like the employers can exploit them. If you're competing for those same positions, like you're going to get hurt, and you're, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to harm you, and you know, you're going to feel the effects of that. And 11 to 12 million people is a lot of people. So it's a lot of depression that's happening. Any, any? I think the responsibility should fall more on the companies then. And like, there should be more of a push for like equal compensation for all workers, including yeah. the undocumented workers, because they're still gonna come into the country regardless. So yeah, like, but undocumented workers aren't gonna really come out of the woodwork, right? Because if you're undocumented, you don't wanna raise your head up and be like, hey, I'm here, I'm undocumented. Like, I need fair wages. Like, I'm being treated in a terrible way. It's like, well, I, don't, I can't take that risk, so I'm gonna keep my head down, you know? And so it's like, yeah. And when the work, when the employers have all the power, like those of you in the, who are Heliji in your countries, the Saudis, the Qataris, the Emiratis, the Kuwaitis, the Omanis, y'all like take when the workers come in and you like take their passports because they surrender their passports, whether they're coming from Nigeria or the Philippines or Nepal or whatever it is, and you, they surrender their passports, you have all the power. And like, man, I've seen this all throughout the Middle East. It's like, this is a problem. So it's like, we, that's the power we have. In this case, people don't even have passports. So yeah, it's a, it's a struggle. So it's, but it's bad for the citizens, the workers of a country whose wages are depressed because the, 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 the employers exploit these undocumented workers to ensure that wages stay down. That's a problem, man. People will go pick fruit or pick vegetables or whatever if you pay them enough. But when you're going to pay some, somebody from Mexico, you know, like 10 or 12 or 15 bucks an hour, well, I'm not going to do it for that. But if you pay me 30 or 35, a fair wage for that kind of work, I'll do it. You know what I mean? But like, well, but they won't do it because they'll just keep the wages down. Any other thing? Yep. You talk about power and how workers or like a boss has so much power over someone that is undocumented or is an immigrant and yeah. they're going to pay them less. But it's like everyone's the same. Per everyone's a person. Yeah. And like everyone should treat everyone the way they would want to be treated in a way Dude, that. I, that's a nice, <laughs> you know, golden rule thing. But, you know, I'm not sure it the economy operates. It would be nice. Yeah. I like that. All right, man. Can you just go to the next blank? All right, okay, can you guys switch off, switch the microphones? Thanks, man. Dude, how'd I do, man? How'd I do? Good? Am I, I got it? You got it? Yeah, man, you gotta keep, you just keep like, keep people on the ropes, man. Keep them on the ropes, boom, boom, boom. All right, okay, you ready? So listen, so here's the thing. So you got all these, you like, uh, you know, what, the fact is that the people who are undocumented in particular are doing a lot of jobs that Americans don't want. Like, let's be really, really clear about that. And um, it's, it, there's no question about it. And, and, and I, so for me, for example, I've studied, when I was starting my graduate school career, I started my master's program. So for three years, I studied undocumented immigration pretty hard for three years. In fact, I thought I was going to do that for my a academic career, and then I went in a different direction. But one of the things that it's really c clear is that um, workers are doing jobs that Americans don't want to do. And so when the anti-immigration people get their way, as they did in 2011 in Alabama, and they passed a law that mandated that all law enforcement agencies, every single one, down to school crossing guards, if they encountered someone who didn't have papers, 
they had to arrest that person, they had to take them in, and they had to report them to authorities so that they could be processed and sent back, sent out of the state and maybe sent back to where they came from, okay? Within six months to a year, okay, so that's the law, HB 56. Can you go to the next slide? Um, within about six months, within a year, they rescinded the law. The state lost 60,000 farm workers who all fled. They were working, they were poultry workers, they were working on fields, but just the poultry workers, they had 120,000 of them and 60,000 fled. It was just like one after another after another. In the state, within one year, one year, people, the state rescinded the law and said, yo, 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 hang on, police, sheriffs, all you people, that law is no longer in effect. So undocumented illegal workers Come back to Alabama. We love you. Come back here. We need you. We need you to work on our poultry plants and in our fields and in our hog farms and we, one after another. Like they had to rescind it. And they said, damn, we're never going to do that again. California tried the same thing and California's had the same effect. And they had to rescind it. And this is be an indication that no matter what, undocumented workers that clearly are doing jobs because they couldn't get Americans to take those jobs. Like, they just won. So they're like, hey, we got 60,000 poultry workers here. They had want ads everywhere. Like, no one would take it. Man. It's like, no, 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 that's okay. I'll just stay unemployed. I ain't doing that. Do you have a thought on that? What, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I pretty much agree with, like, what you're saying, which is, you know, immigrants are coming here and taking jobs Americans don't want mm -hmm. and you know once they step foot in here and they start working they're immediately part of like the income here and you know helping out the government so if they leave they're taking that money and income whatever with them so yeah yeah they're taking it for sure yeah yeah yeah. and like all these poultry workers the poultry plants were shutting down left and right it's like this is a problem that that means the economy is like really just getting hammered you know this is a really really bad idea Bro, any thought on it? I mean, yeah, I think it's just, like I said, proof that immigrants, like, help and push our economy to be the best. Mm, push our economies in, in different ways, right? I mean, there are lots of different pieces of the economy, but um, it becomes a really, a, you know, any, any, any central piece. I, I like this cartoon, right? Go to the next slide. Um, Thanks, Jesus, for the f this food and Jesus, <laughs> right? Like, you know, what in, if you speak English, you never name your kid Jesus because I don't know, because it's just a bad idea. You don't want to name your kid Jesus. But, you know, in Spanish, you still Jesus is all good, man. Right. So it's like de nada. Like it really is essential. And so any like so how do you. So for you, like think about like your dad, what was he doing when he came here? I'm pretty sure it was just like manual labor, like, you know, working with his hands. Um, he just, he found, he just found work. Yeah. Um, I don't really remember all that much about what he said, but he came with like a couple of his siblings and he didn't know any English when he got here. His sibling luckily mm -hmm. did, but he was just like coasting around, just kind of looking for work and just, that's all he could do, just work. Yeah. And it's never difficult to find work. I mean, if you want to find work, y'all, right? If you, if you are in need, and it's the difference between starving and being homeless or being whatever, and you're in need, you're going to find work. And most of the people, my guess is, would be like your dad, most of the people who leave home, you can, Bolivia, man, Bolivia to up through Central America and Mexico and then the U.S., that's a long route. If you're the person who's going to do that, you're really motivated and you're, you're ready to go. The people who are the, 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 the less motivated Bolivians, the more, more lazy Bolivians, we might say, are just less motivated, they're still back in Bolivia. But it's the people like your dad, those are the people who we want. You know, if you're going to go through that, 
Like, I think, you know, like, man, if you're going to climb in the undercarriage of an airplane and you're going to try to l- land in some foreign city somewhere and get out of the airplane and do something, if you got those kind of cojones, man, come work for me. You know what I mean? Bro, do you have any a final, a final thought? So this all makes sense to you. Where do you work with undocumented people? Or on, uh, I work in food. Yeah. Like the food industry. Yeah, you ne- and fee- they probably never have a hard time finding jobs, right? Because the food industry is tough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no one wants to do it. Yeah. It's under the table. Under the table, yeah, yeah. Huh. Here in State College or back no, home? No, no, back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here in State College, man, there's so many people. All right, man. Okay, awesome, man. Can you, like, switch, switch microphones? Bro. Dude, how'd I do, man? Dude, how'd I do? Good? This? How was that? Bro, how was that? Nine out of ten? Eight out of ten? Yeah, you got it? All right, man. I feel like every time somebody new comes out, I convince myself of something else. So, all right, let's do this. Um, so can you, go to the, can you go to the next slide? So, yeah, so a lot of people, this is a map of the United States. This is one, one, you know, one of the early, before it was colonized by the uh, Europeans, right? This is a map of the U.S., man. This was not barren territory. This was native lands. Indigenous people lived here. The entire country that is the United, what is the United, this land, it wasn't a country at this time. But the entire land space was lived in by, pe- by the indigenous peoples of the Americas, right? And they had kind of carved it up. And the, and the lines that you see there aren't really exact, but it's kind of more or less. You know, we had you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of different tribes, right? And just in the, this area, what would be North America here? However, and so a lot of people argue hey, so therefore, you know, like the border, like if you look at this border between, um, right here, between Mexico and the U.S., it's not that the people cross the border. People living here cross the border. The border crossed them. The, the people who came in here, they made a border, this artificial border here, and it crossed over them. So the DNA of the, the indigenous peoples right here and the indigenous peoples here, it's exactly the same. And so people make the argument that like, well, so therefore, in a way, like, well, we kind of came, the Europeans came and they kind of, they stole the land and therefore, but I would argue, in a way that's true, right? Can you go to the next slide? Um, This is the, the planet, right? This is like what God sees, you know? Whatever, however she sees it, this is how she sees it. It's just like this planet. There are no borders anywhere, right? But the truth is, go to the next slide. Life is about changing borders. And he, this is the patterns of human migration over time. And what you notice about these arrows is that people are just moving into all sorts of different places constantly. It's going north, going south, like different people who were colonize this area they get up and they go colonize another area and that's just how it is so like the indigenous if you go can you go back two slides so this these people weren't just living in peace they were all also moving into each other's lands and they fought and they had wars and they battled each other because these were different tribes of people now go forward a little bit and so that's what's happening here people just change and so that's what happens now what happens suddenly is that, hey, this land in the Americas, well, you know, back in the late 15th century, um, 16th century, these people from this area of the world just came into this whole Western hemisphere and they took it over. And that's what it is. And so these people have no obligation to admit other, other people who come in, once they establish their legal boundaries, their legal territory, they have no legal obligation to admit anybody else or bring anybody else in because that's just how it is. Just like Europeans, 
you know, if you look at the history of Europe, it's a really fascinating transformation. Just like European nation states, they're just shifting and changing. And like you watch it, you, you look at a map of the changing political boundaries of Europe over the past like 2,000 years. It's a fascinating transformation with European tribes just battling it out with one another. And so like these people, so we have no legal obligation to, to help like undocumented people who want to come here. We just, we're in this now, this place called the United States. We set the laws and people should abide by the laws. Just like European countries, African nations, Asian nations, etc. That's just kind of how it is. So there's no, we have no moral, legal, or ethical obligation toward anybody else. Just to buy by the laws. Because that's the history of human beings on this planet. It's just changing and reshaping the environment. So do you have, what kind of thoughts do you have on that? I don't think it's as simple as people just abiding the laws. I think like, if it was that simple, I think people would choose to stay in their homeland because they're knowledgeable of the fact that they're like, committing a crime, entering the U.S. illegally. Uh -huh. So they're doing that with that in mind. So for them to have like committed that crime, it's for a reason valid enough uh -huh. for them to have thought that it would be worth it. So I, I don't know. I think like to say that illegal immigrants should just um, like abide by the U.S.'s law yeah. despite the conditions that are trying to make them leave back home. Yeah. They're going to be willing to overlook the U.S.'s law just because like the consequences would still be better than what they could be facing. Okay. Possibly. All right. I got you. Yep. And maybe if they're in jail here, they get like three, three meals and a bed. Yeah, right. Case, yeah. Okay. But, but still we don't have an obligation. The people of the United States based on legal principles also don't have an obligation to really let people break the laws and come into the country. Because that's just kind of how it is. Like, why do we have that obligation? You know, why should we? Yeah. Any more than Germany does, for example. You say that Americans don't have the ethical, moral by law, what yeah. to abide by, what, yeah, the law. But they came to other people's lands first, illegally, and then wanted to make laws for them to abide by, but that wasn't their land in the first place. Just like you said, the border, they put that border there and was in their land because yeah, I they got share you. the same DNA. I got you. But you know, but your, but listen, but like your people, right? So you, you, your blood, I mean, like let's look at Puerto Rico, right? Puerto Rico was a land of the Taino people. So the Spaniards came and Africans came and Europeans came and Africans didn't come willingly, but they came nonetheless, right? And clearly you have African blood and you have white blood and you may have Taino blood. And, and so like, okay, well, that's the nature of life. It just changes. It all just changes. And like, you can't ever go backwards in time. You just accept that it changes. And now this group of people's in control. Russia might actually take control of Ukraine and like, okay, that's what it is. And now the Ukraine is under the domination of Russia. And that's just what it's going to be. And like, ah, what can you do? You know? I mean, that's, no, no one needs to, you can't look backwards for the legal foundation for what is happening in any one moment. The borders of the past aren't the borders of today. So you got to go with what is today. So therefore, even though we built that border between the U.S. put the border there between Mexico and the, and the, and the U.S. And like, okay, the Mexicans didn't put the border there, but well, we put it there, so we win. That's what it is. Now you got to abide by the border. I don't like it necessarily, but that's what it is. Any thought on that? I had a thought about what you said about like the the people of the U.S. not having an obligation. Yeah, I think that like line of thinking just leads to ignoring the problem of undocumented immigrants. Okay, and that would just lead to undocumented immigrants entering the country without any type of programs to help them or like okay assimilate them or mm -hmm. like that wouldn't actually lead to any progress in the situation. I think, in my opinion. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So the idea is. That may be the case, but we still got to figure out what to do. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's fair. 
All right. Yeah, okay, nice comments, both of you. All right, let's go. Bro, okay, you're, you're out. <laughs> Pass the mic. Dude, how'd I do, man? How'd I do on that one? I, fuck, I killed that one. All right. How y'all doing? Are you, my head's spinning, man. You like? All right, you ready? So here's a map of the U.S. Um, before the Europeans show up. Now, mind you, it's not exact. It's just the map of the U.S. part because, like, you can't. These borders weren't here, and these borders weren't here. You know what I mean? It's just a land mass. And so, you know, the truth is, this is the land that people were living. Um, the the you know the Europeans come. They, they discover the people who already knew they existed, right? So how do you discover people who already knew they existed? But they nonetheless discovered them. We named, you know, they now go by, the, the, we use Indian or Indios because, you know, Columbus thought that he was going to, the, to India by, by way of, by going west. Um, and so like, okay, but this land, this is populated by people who have been living here for millennia. And that's kind of the nature of it. So, and then they just were colonized and just destroyed, man. Cultures destroyed. The, the longest, most extensive genocide in human history happened right here with these people, right? And you, you, if you go to Bolivia, is um, all the way through South America, right? Because all through the, the Western Hemisphere is colonized. So in the next slide. Um, so if you think about the Europeans, right? Think about like, thinking about Europeans as trespassers, thieves, slavers, genocidal racists, the most extensive genocide in human history. So like, well, why aren't they genocidal racists? Because they were all racist. Because one of the reasons the genocide could actually happen is the same reason that slavery, chattel slavery could happen, that people had racist ideologies and had this idea that they were actually the advanced peoples that didn't they didn't have it right away when the whole process started but they developed an ideology around that so like all these people far from being people who would be like should be held up there's like these white supremacist criminals and like this is a problem so all of this land go to the next slide all of the land like you got all these suburbs in the united states this is all red land this is, in, this is Indian land. This is indigenous people's land. This room right here, where you're sitting right now, the plot of land on which you are sitting and I am standing, this is red land. This is stolen land. The blood of peoples is under this land. Like, this is a problem. It should be acknowledged. So when people decide, hey, we're going to come to this other country. First off, we didn't invite you here. The, these, the people, we didn't invite you. We didn't ask you to establish these territories and these laws. You established it on us. You imposed your way of thinking on us. Your genocidal, maniacal thinking and ideology, you impose it on us. So why do we have to abide by that? And so when you think, when I think about all immigration, including undocumented immigration, like what right do I have to say like, no, you can't come here. You're here illegally. Go, can you go back one slide? These people were here illegally. I'm here illegally. My ancestors were here illegally. You know what I mean? So, what, what, so the, you know, your dad, like, you know, Addie's father, oh, Addie's father came illegally. My ancestors came illegally. How are my ancestors still? Oh, good. oh, well, but, you know, my ancestors, but they had paperwork and they arrived at what, uh, who knows where, right? It doesn't matter. It's from the perspective of the indigenous peoples in the Americas, it, it's illegal. It's like, okay. All right, man. Thought. How do you, th what do you think about that? Um... Well, I guess if you think about it, everyone's an immigrant then, so. Mm. Well, you can look at the indigenous peoples, the first peoples, when it truly was a barren land, yeah. they weren't immigrants, so. Yeah, I mean, it, like after 
they came. It's just the language is up for grabs, uh-huh. unfortunately. And it's just people but, just want to take everything now. Okay, but, but somehow these people, the so-called the, the people of European ancestry, or anybody who is a naturalized American, like here in the U.S., like you have this idea that somehow you deserve to be here. It's like, what do you deserve to be here? Like, like if I, is that your phone, by the way? Yeah. So if I take your phone and like, and you can say like, hey, that's my phone, okay? But then I take your phone and I give it to, to this guy right here. And I'm like, yeah, well, I gave it to him. And then he gives it to somebody else. And he gives it, the, by, the time, by the time he has it, he's making calls on it. He has no idea that that phone's stolen. That's his phone. Maybe he buys it off him. That's his phone now. So it's like, okay, what do you think? He should give it back to you? He bought it. He bought it fairly from him. So it's like, okay, well, in a way, then like, I don't know. Makes me really wonder about all of this. We just think that someone's okay. It's just okay that this land used to be red land. It's just okay. Well, that was a long time ago. Well, why is that okay? It's like same if he's got her phone now. Why is it somehow okay for him to have her phone? just because it passed through different hands over time. It's stolen phone. It's stolen land. Bro. I mean... (laughs) No, wait, hang on. Yeah, no, go ahead. You go. All right. Uh, I was going to say just like, yeah, when they came here, you you understand how it's wrong, but, I mean, right now, in this present day and age, I don't think we have much to do or much that we could change from what Columbus did when he came here. I think we're past that okay yeah we're past it so but now it goes back it sounds to me though it goes back to what you were saying earlier have some empathy and compassion yeah essentially yeah 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 i know right as opposed to like come on man have some empathy have some compassion dude you can you just bring them out yeah you would say that empathy compassion the whole thing huh no, yeah, you guys are going to stay. All right, man, come on out, y'all. Hey, so let me ask you the, let me ask, you got, oh, wait, do you have a mic? The other mic. Do we have a, well, Cassidy, can, can you pass, yeah, pass your mics down. But what do you, like, if you could, what did you learn from your the arguments? Like, what, what did what did you what did you think? If, could you have an overall kind of sense of what you thought I was arguing, what you thought I was saying, the message, the two of you? I think you were pointing out um, that there needs to be like a solution to the problem instead uh-huh. of like discussing like the ethical and moral values of it. Like, there needs to be like a hard solution of how these people can be helped into the country and like how many people can be helped. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I got from it. Because mm-hmm. usually with these conversations, like I feel like it's like a moral dilemma of whether those people should be let in the country in the first place. Yeah. And it doesn't really like address how that would be done and yeah, the okay. logistics of that realistically. Uh-huh. All right. An- uh, Anaya, did you, what'd you think about what I would, did you feel like I was being like, well, yeah, what did you think about what I was saying? Let me just leave it open. For me personally, I think. Um, from what what I what you heard from me, what the yeah. arguments I was making, yeah, go ahead. I think that it's just you're not going to have a fair process of anything for everyone, and mm-hmm. um, like my friend here was saying that. Um, Wait, I like that. So I said, you're not going to have a fair, it's not going to be fair for everybody. Can you just black, black in the screen? Yeah, it's not going to be fair for everybody, right? So let's just, just get used to it. It's not going to be fair, so just deal with it. Yeah, and then we were talking in the back about how, you know, 
America. I'm going to say the United States. Yeah. yeah. And how we keep putting these laws that people have to abide by. Yeah. And we keep pounding it in making sure everyone abides by it. But every time we make sure everyone abides by it, none of the underlying problems from before are ever dealt with. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we just keep building on top of everything that was deeper mm -hmm. than the surface. Okay. All right. How, all right. Okay. Did you guys feel like I was being really like anti-immigration? I think at times like there was like some type of spin like oriented towards like like preventing more immigrants yeah. just because like you said like economic factors and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think at some points it probably could have been a little anti-immigration, but I think in general All you right. were just presenting like like trying to find like a solution to okay how. a solution okay i like that yeah which is actually says a lot right some of the stuff that's anti-immigration is actually people that are also really focused on solutions like instead of like we got to get somewhere on this how about the two of you what did you think about what i was saying if you took my whole argument like everything i was talking about yeah any how could you summarize it I, th <clears throat> I just thought you were trying to highlight the pro like highlight immigration as a problem mm -hmm. sort of and kind of putting it up to us as to what we would do to solve it or what we would do like what what we would think is the right thing to do about it I guess uh-huh uh-huh yep all right um basically you were just trying to say that like when the Native Americans were here like people came here illegally but yeah. now that it's happening now, it's a big deal. And that the people that do come here legally to work, when they leave, like they're taking that income uh -huh. away with it too. Uh huh. So, okay, so listen, um, what I did was for the two of you, I took a very explicitly anti-immigration argument. So everything I was saying was very anti-immigration. I was just walking about the laws. It's like, listen, there are laws. This is legality. You got to follow it. Everything was anti-immigration. For these two, I took a very pro or open or more liberalized approach to immigration. L L Leah, can you go back to that one slide at the very beginning where I like said those two things? Just blacken the screen and go find that slide where I put the two approaches up in the very beginning. Okay. And what I did with the two of you is um, I took a very po pro or positive immigration approach, right? The one where I had perspective one and perspective two, like the third slide. First position, second position. I took a very positive approach to immigration by saying things like, listen, we're all here illegally. Like we don't have, and nobody has a right to, to tell somebody else that they can't be. So the first position for you all was like, we got to get immigration under control. Like you can't have, it just undermines the social order. And so we got to do something, right? We got to find a solution. We got to fix it. For you two, it's like, hey, immigration is positive, man. Like there's like a really good thing. Like we need, we have all these people who are willing to do the work that other people don't want to do. And like, this is a really good thing. For them, I was arguing, yeah, but those workers are depressing wages. Like, this is a problem. I only gave them, I only gave you one slice of the argument, and I only gave you one slice of the argument as a way to show, to demonstrate to the class that it's actually really easy to only see one side of an issue. Like, I can take this one, and I can take that approach, and I can run with it, or I can take the other approach over here. And too often, this is what we do. It doesn't matter what the issue is doesn't matter any singular issue that I could take in this class regardless of what it is or any class related to human beings or almost any issue I can just run with one or I can run with the other and it doesn't matter I can look at all this like these trans issues and like okay so you know non-binary like ah, all these non-binary issues I could make such a strong persuasive argument to stop thinking about this non-binary bullshit and like how this is a problem and like oh my god can y'all just stop with this non this woke non-binary nonsense and i could just go right up these stairs with that issue and boom 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 and i could just hammer that home and when i got to the top of the stairs 
Even those of you who are really pro, like saying like, nah, man, this is really, I'm, I'm liberal, I really support trans issues and non-binary issues, and I got this. Even you, by the time I got to the top of the stairs, you'd be questioning yourselves and going like, ah, man, I don't know. Maybe I'm not really thinking about this in the right way. I've never thought about this. I've never thought about that. Like, I'm not really sure. Or I could take the approach about, man, this binary stuff in like thinking in non-binary terms, it's so cool. It just opens intellectually. It opens us intellectually and thoughtfully and like, man, if you just look at this and then you look at that and then you look over here and you look here, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's actually really cool. And it just, it, it can open our minds. And by the time we got to the top, those of you who are thinking like, oh, this non-binary shit, oh, we got to really cut, cut some of this back. By the time I get to the top, most of you would be going like, yeah, I never really thought about that, huh? And that's what this is. So if I had like switched it, it's hard because, you know, we didn't have a lot of time for you, right? But I could have just switched it and randomly like switched it up. And you, you would have only heard the things I was saying to them which was very opposite of what I was saying to you. And you would have only heard the things that I said to them, which was very opposite of, of the kind of stuff I said to you, which is like, should make us all stop and pause when we watch Fox News or CNN every night. Like be thinking like, huh. You know what I mean? All right, so listen, man. Um, dude, how was it? I don't know if it was perfect, but. <laughs> Dude, can we have a hand for you all, for these folks? All right, man. Hey, can you go to, the, go to the quiz? Hey, so listen, hang on. So remember, if, yo, you guys got the master up there? You good? Listen, man, if you do not your Wi-Fi isn't working. Turn your Wi-Fi on, because some of you, you're not turning it on. And that's why it's not working, dude. But if you can't, do not take a photo, do not send, you've got to take a selfie. Hey, can you put that up on the big screen? You got to take a selfie with this on the screen. All right, man, we'll see you on... Uh